I'm not here to talk about last year. I'm here to talk about what happens after you leave East High. <laughs> Do you think this is a good idea, Troy? Back off. Okay. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times actors shaded their own movies. I met uh, Adam West back there just now, and I was like, hey, I'm really sorry. Do you have any regrets? Garfield, maybe? Cats come when they feel like it. Not when they're told. For this list, we'll be looking at actors who openly declared their dislike for their own films. Do you agree with the actors and their opinions? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Christopher Plummer, The Sound of Music You may call me Captain. Who isn't a fan of this classic musical? Captain Von Trapp himself, apparently. Christopher Plummer may have seemed to be enjoying himself in the film, but the actor has reportedly referred to the film as the sound of mucus. You flatter me, Captain. Oh, how clumsy of me. I meant to accuse you. Plummer did say the film itself is good, but he found it a movie difficult to perform in, as it was, quote, so awful and sentimental and gooey. He couldn't find any sort of humor in the film, hence his distaste for it. In his lengthy, illustrious career, Mr. Plummer has said that The Sound of Music was his most challenging role. I will not forgive you for that. Number 9. Charlize Theron, Reindeer Games Every actor has a few duds on their filmography list. In a 2008 interview with Esquire magazine, Charlize Theron was asked which film she liked the least. I'm in this too, and I'm really scared. She didn't hold back in saying that Reindeer Games was, quote, a bad, bad, bad movie. It wasn't a total loss, however, as Theron went on to say she did get to work with director John Frankenheimer, which is the main reason she took the role in the first place. No future, just more of the same. She admitted that she knew the film might not be so great when she took the job. The thriller didn't quite please cinemagoers either, scoring a mere 25% on Rotten Tomatoes. Maybe you saw me and I didn't. Number eight, Ben Affleck, Gili. I don't even know why I had a crush on you back a long time ago when I first met you, that you he cured me of. This film was apparently so awful that we're still talking about it 17 years later. Affleck is no stranger to box office bombs. See the same year's Daredevil attempt. In fact, he appears more than once on our list. Believe me, that's all I got had. Better than nothing. However, he doesn't always express his dislike for his own films unless perhaps everyone else is doing it. The widely panned film is bad, and Affleck has said so. However, he has also said that the reason it drew so much attention was his and JLo's real life romance at the time, citing that Angelina Jolie was in a couple of critical failures that same year and got nowhere near as much attention. You trying to test me? Is that it? Wanna see if I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do? Or maybe it was just that bad, Ben. So it's sad, okay? What do you want me to do? Number seven, Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern. Beware my power. Green Lantern's life. In 2020, at the height of lockdown status, a fan tweeted a question to Ryan Reynolds. He asked him if he should rent Green Lantern for 99 cents on Apple TV. Reynolds responded with a simple walk away. In fact, Reynolds has attributed his difficulties in getting cast in any major role for a long time to this film. I'm sorry about that. He blames the film's failure on some unfortunate practices in Hollywood, as the script was given relatively minimal attention compared to the hype and advertising. The ring never makes a mistake. This time it did. Reynolds redeemed himself in the superhero genre with Deadpool and is probably grateful to be remembered for that role rather than for Green Lantern. And please don't make the super suit green. Or animated. Number six, Halle Berry, Catwoman. Catwoman. Mm -hmm. You heard of her? Oh yeah. Ha. Black leather. Whip. Halle Berry was definitely the portrait of good sportsmanship when it came to 2004's Catwoman. The film won big at the Razzie Awards, a ceremony dedicated to the worst of the year in cinema. Barry won Worst Actress and graciously attended and accepted her Razzie Award, feigning sobs and thanking Warner Brothers for casting her in this piece of shit movie. I mean, it's not like I ever aspired to be here. Barry had won the Oscar for Best Actress for Monsters Ball in 2002, and following it up with a cinematic dumpster fire wasn't exactly heartening. Yeah. However, she took it in stride and managed to not let failure map out her future. Number five, Jim Carrey, Kick-Ass 2. Welcome to Justice Forever. This one's a little different. Jim Carrey starred in 2013's Kick-Ass 2 as Colonel Stars and Stripes. A month after the production wrapped, the Sandy Hook school shooting occurred. 
Carrie then took to Twitter, denouncing the film's violence in the wake of such a tragedy. Producers of the film were taken aback by his reaction, with writer Matt Miller responding by saying Carrie had the script 18 months prior to the job and knew what he was getting into from the start. Catch the strays. Yeah. Oh, and try to have fun. Otherwise, what's the point? Producers maintained that the film was for entertainment purposes and had nothing to do with any real life violence. Without kick ass, none of us would be here. That's from the heart. Number four, Bill Murray. Garfield the movie. I hate Mondays. In this case, the actor's distaste developed following a misunderstanding on his part. 2004's Garfield film cast Bill Murray in the starring role, voicing the famous feline. The film was a critical flop and spawned an interesting story. <laughs> Got milk? Murray claims he joined the production because of a mix up. He thought the screenwriter was Joel Cohen, C O E N, of Cohen Brothers fame. However, it turned out to be Joel Cohen, Cohen with an H, a different film writer. Yeah, just one big happy family. Yeah, right. Apparently, the production was difficult, with Murray trying to fix the script wherever he could. So do you have any regrets? <laughs> Garfield, maybe? Number three, Katherine Heigl, Knocked Up. Though a lot of actors have bashed their own films, this one is perhaps one of the most publicized instances. I'm pregnant? With emotion? With a baby. You're the father. I'm the father. Yes! Knocked Up came out in 2007, and in 2008, Heigl did an interview with Vanity Fair, in which she expressed some regret in playing her role in the film. She called the film, quote, a little bit sexist, and criticized its portrayal of women. Get out of the car. No! I own this car! Get out of my car! No! Get out of my car! No! The film's director, Judd Apatow, was not too pleased with the news, claiming he was expecting an apology from Heigl, yet never received one. The film itself received much box office praise, and it seemed Heigl was one of the relatively few who didn't like it. This is fun. We should do this more, I think. I feel like the most fun I've had in a really long time. Number two, George Clooney, Batman and Robin. Seven million. <laughs> Never leave the cave without it. Poor, poor Mr. Batnipples. 1997's Batman and Robin is the notoriously bad Batman film, and its lead actor, George Clooney, knows this and is quite apologetic. I actually thought I'd destroyed the franchise until they brought it back. You know, they, somebody else brought it back years later and changed it. But, you know, I thought at the time this was going to be a very good career move. Um, it wasn't. At the 2014 New York Comic Con, where Clooney was making an appearance, he took the opportunity to apologize to the crowd, as well as to veteran Batman actor Adam West for the unnecessary anatomy and the terrible scripted puns. Give me a fist bump, and I was like, yeah, it just hit me, it just hit me there. <laughs> Clooney also blamed his turn as the caped crusader for the lack of Comic Con invites, citing the comment sections on various platforms. At least he knows what he did. I see the comment sections on all you guys. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Channing Tatum, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. He was forced to do the film and hated it. I'm going to make you very unhappy. I'm already unhappy. Jessica Alba, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. She had a terrible time during filming. Guys, we have a problem. Colin Farrell, Miami Vice. He said he didn't like it much. Just cash out and get out. Yeah? Yeah, as far and as fast as you can. Michelle Pfeiffer, Grease 2. She hated the film with a vengeance. Why don't you just stay out of my life then, huh, Johnny? I'm out! Brad Pitt, The Devil's Own. He called it, quote, the most irresponsible bit of filmmaking. You are putting me in a very awkward position here. I'm sorry, Mr. Burke. That's the way it has to be for now. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Robert Pattinson, The Twilight Saga. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. Here's a case of constant, plentiful shade being thrown at an entire franchise. In multiple interviews, Pattinson has done nothing to hide his distaste for the five films. He has commented on the fan base, the story, his regret for taking the role and the aftermath for him as a professional actor, his loss of dignity, and the list goes on. Look, if it makes money and people love you, why wouldn't you make another one? Mm -hmm. Would you make another one? 
if there was an alien invasion and stuff. His co-star Kristen Stewart has expressed similar feelings. The franchise was high grossing and hugely popular with fans and helped launch the two lead actors into the limelight. However, in the case of the sparkly vampire, we get the feeling Pattinson would have done without any of it had he known the misery it would entail for him. Can't trust vampires. Trust me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.